G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to this week's Backyard Farm Update Vlog. Uh, there's not a lot of aquaponics in this one, just a couple of um, seconds or so towards the end, mainly because the clip that I'll be uploading tomorrow is just focusing on the aquaponics and a bit of a catastrophe there. So if you want to catch that one and you haven't subscribed, all you need to do is hit that little subscribe button down there or there and um, check the bell icon when it appears and you'll be sent a notification once I've uploaded that to YouTube. Uh, this clip here is pretty much all looking at the last mango harvest for the season. I promise it will be the last time I show a large mango harvest on the channel this year. Uh, then, um, yeah, we're going to have a bit of a wander out the front and I'll show you what's fruiting on out the front there. And towards the end, I've got a little bit of a look at a new solarizing unit that I bought. It's pretty much all a multi-purpose thing. So there you go. I hope you enjoy the clip and I'll catch you at the end. How's it going folks? I wasn't planning on doing a clip this afternoon. I've just come down to take the last of the mangoes off the tree. You can see a little cache of them just up in there. Uh, sorry if the, the audio is not too crash hot and neither is the vision. I've just got the phone uh, resting up on the top rail of the back fence. So I hope you can catch the action. Uh, I'll give you a look at um, some of the other ones that I've harvested already as well as these guys. But I thought we'd pull this beauty out one last time um, for the season because I don't think there's going to be too many left. The, uh, the, the bats have pretty much all been smashing them over the last couple of nights. Um, I'll give you a look at what we found on the ground today. I've only come down this afternoon because it's just been too blooming hot. So we'll harvest these and then I'll give you a look at um, what we've taken off as well as some of the debris we found this morning. Wow, that's a nice one. Whoops. So that's a nice bit of fruit there, uh, nice and heavy. It doesn't look like it's got any blow marks. It's still nice and firm, so it should be fly free. Uh, go down with the other one. This one here's got a bit of colour to it, so I'm not too sure what it's going to be like. Oh, it's nice and firm. It's got some damage down the bottom here. And that's a little bit soft, but I might be able to... Oh, we'll see how it goes. I'd say that's uh, fly blown by the look of it. I'll see what it's like in a few days time when the top is all ripe. Oh, we've got some right up the top here. The smallest one. May not be able to reach this one. Oh yeah, just. Oh, one's come off by itself. This one here's got a bit of a blush on it, but it's still nice and firm. Oh, it smells so sweet though. This is one that fell out by itself. I don't think I'm interested in that one somehow. Yeah. I think I'm going to end up with more than I anticipated, folks. The old bottle's getting a little bit wobbly as well. Don't know how long it's going to last. But she's definitely done an awesome job. I won't grab all of these, just this one with the blush on it. If I can single it out. I'll just um, go up and grab the uh, tray. And we'll load them all up. But I thought I'd show you what I found on the ground today. There's that one there. That one I think is one I missed the other day. Um, around here, they certainly had a field day last night. We've got three good looking ones there. Another in the garden bed there. Another one there. And there's another one up there. And I noticed down here, there's one there. And over the back there, there's two more. So, these guys had an absolute field day last night. Oh, I just noticed. Another one down here in the bed. <coughs> oh, that one's, yeah, it looks like some bugs have eaten that rather than bats. The bats have probably knocked it down. Something else has had a bit of a munch on them. But anyway, hmm, I definitely had a good feed last night. It's a shame that, you know, all this stuff's going in the compost. I just noticed another one over here. They've had a little feed on. <laughs> some sort of slugs having a meal too. So all that's going into the solarization bucket. Well, the little uh, bottle got a little bit too wobbly in there, folks, so I just zapped in a couple more screws. Uh, the reason being is I've seen a few more mangoes uh, just up in the tree at the front here that I can probably grab, so I might grab them. Then we'll come back and give you a look at the uh, harvest for the day. So there we go, folks. The last 24 mangoes that I can see on the tree for the season, except for those um, few small ones that I'll just leave on there for the uh, fruit bat, so I'm pretty chuffed with that. There is one or two in there that... Here we go may have a suspect um, fruit fly strike 
So I'll just keep an eye on that. I'd say that little section there where it's oozing is the likely entrance point. Uh, but yeah, but as for the rest of them, I'm fairly sure that they're all pretty much all fly free. It's actually been a really good season for fruit fly in some respects. I've hardly had any in the mango that I've processed in the, um, in the house yet. And what I've seen is pretty much all just on bits and pieces that have already, the bats have already been into. So I'd say they'd ripened up on the tree. The fruit fly had um, stung them on the tree because they, uh, the bats don't tend to go for these green fellas only when they get a little bit ripe. So I'd say these guys would have been a choice target in the next couple of days. And you can't pull of these other big ones are just starting to get a bit of a blush to them. So anyway, um, once more, I do need to say a huge thank you to Kate. This is an absolutely marvellous contraption. It's just so easy to harvest them by myself now. Um, you know, I just make sure that the tray or whatever I'm putting them in is at a reasonable enough distance. And I can um, pull them off the tree and pop them straight in the crate if I want to. But yeah, it's just made life so much easier than trying to um, angle the cutter and all the rest of it and catch them in the little basket. How's it going, folks? Just a bit of a quick look at what's grown on out the front this afternoon. Uh, if you see my fingers, I'm trying to um, stop the glare from the sun coming into the frame. Just thought I'd give you a bit of a look at these uh, rosellas. I was out here this morning and noticed that a few of them have fruit set from flowers I didn't realize had already bloomed so pretty chuffed about that we're going to get a, um, a nice early harvest of rosella which is good because we're pretty much all out of all the um, syrup that we did make and a bit of an update on the corn guess what we have the cobs forming on the opposite side to those little growths that I saw and I wouldn't be surprised if some of these actually throw out cobs as well mainly because these guys here have leaves coming out of the top of their cobs so um, it's it's yeah a little bit of a mystery to me because I've never had corn grown like this before this is just normal hybrid corn that's come from um, the the garden center by the way that just came in punnets that I planted out I was actually um, thinking the other day that I might turn sorry for the glare there folks I might turn this um, Kajari melon bed into another corn bed even though it's got a couple of sweet potatoes in there as well. Some of the Hawaiian purples are in there. Um, they appear to be doing okay. But as soon as the last couple of melons are ripe on here, I'll um, sow out some corn seeds. I'll buy a fresh lot and see how they go. Something else I noticed this morning was we have a couple of figs that will be ready to come off tomorrow. And not only that, but up here in the banana tree, I hope this doesn't glare out on me, but we have a banana flower forming. Not only there, but also up in there. So, we're gonna have a couple of bunches of bananas on. I'm pretty happy these guys have decided to flower now. I was a little bit concerned we may have lost uh, the next couple of flowers because I did take some fairly sizable suckers out of there. But obviously, yeah, no, that's all going good. By the way, um, I've been contemplating these beds in the corner even though we have taken a couple of cherry tomatoes out of there, it hasn't been that productive because it's pr fairly shaded. That Chinese celtus next door has um, popped up again and they're not getting a lot of sunlight. I might just uh, pull everything out of there and feed them up, get some um, aged horse manure laid on top and let them just break down, let the worms feed on it. Keep it nice and moist so the worms have some water in there and then plant out some brassicas there because towards the end of summer I'll um, knock back that Chinese celtus fairly hard. And this bed here I still haven't done anything with. I never got around to uh, mulching up the corn. Maybe I could plant a corn crop in there. So we'll wait and see. I just thought I'd give you a bit of a gander at this because I don't think I've shown this for a while. Uh, this is the front yard compost heap. It's pretty much all just lawn clippings. That's what it started off being. But seeing as we're not really um, running any compost piles out the back, what I've been doing is just pulling back top layers and popping in all the scraps from the kitchen and then just letting it um, break down in there. I think it's um, adding something to the pile because this um, Hawaiian sunshine sweet potato has just taken off. This is the one that I tried to grow through, um, was it last winter or the winter before? I think it was last winter and it didn't do much chop. But here in the compost heap it started to do really well. So I figure I'm just going to let it grow all over the top but just leave, reserve this little area here for me to um, continually throw the scraps in. I've actually got a load of mangoes that need to go in there from the solarizing bucket. 
there you go i thought i'd just give you a bit of a gander at this that sun glare is getting very annoying on this phone i might have to see if i can get something to stop that what i wanted to show you was just something down in here i noticed this bit of ginger was looking a little bit floppy and then i um folded it up and i found this little bugger down here so what we have here is a cluster moth caterpillar that is burrowing into a piece of brand new ginger so i've just come around the other side to show you that's a little bit of baby ginger and this little so-and-so is burrowed in there and had a good feed on it i'll tell you what you just can't have anything nice with these caterpillars around so that'll be one of those cluster moth caterpillars i showed you um in the last clip where i was old so recent clip where i was talking about all the different um, insects we get around the patch at this time of year so just give him the squish but you know that's very disappointing to see that that whole section of ginger looks like it's been eaten out so oh well you win some you lose some I'll pop that in with the rest of the scraps so just a little bit of an update here uh, for you on the solarization i ended up going out and springing for a hundred liter or i think it's roughly around about 25 um, gallon wheelie bin the reason i got this is because it's it's nice and dark so it attracts the heat and i can fit a fair bit in there so i've got a few more mangoes down the back i need to add in it's heating up nicely in here this is only the first day it's been out in full sun just to give you a bit of a look you might be able to make out there all that squirming and worming in the juicy part of that mango down there that's all fruit fly larvae it's one or two crawling on the top of that one and over here we have a um, cluster caterpillar hiding in that mango it came in in there there's more little fruit flies um, squirming around down in there so i'd say with today's predicted 34 degrees celsius temperature uh, most of these guys are going to be um, dead by tomorrow and then I can just go and empty this in the grass pile out the front and turn it into some soil. So this little unit though will come in handy. I'll also use it to um, solarize weeds. And uh, not only that, I can use it to store things like clay media or uh, just generally move garden scraps around the place. So it was a fairly good investment, I think. So I just thought I'd add this in to give you a bit of a gander. So just at the end here, I thought I'd give you all a bit of a sneak peek at the um, chicken shed. The plans have changed, um, but yeah, I haven't really gotten around to do much of it this week. I've been flat out doing other bits and pieces and traveling around the countryside. I have changed the design somewhat. I'm actually not going to be using this um, corrugated tin rear wall. I'm going to be using some of these sheets uh, that came with the garden shed and make up something new. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that will be in next week's update vlog. I do hope though that you have enjoyed this little update. Uh, give you a bit of a quick look at the native beehive here. The girls are very busy today. Uh, if you do um, like these clips, like I said at the start, you can always um, subscribe with that little button down the bottom there. A quick thank you as well to those marvellous folks who are helping support the channel over on Patreon. You can check out the Super Contributors links down in the description below. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own gardens are booming and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers folks, have a top one.